Hi all, today we are going to discuss about gas and gas sidle methods without PV bus. And with PV bus, because it will be very complex to analyze with the PV bus. So that's why in today's class I am going to discuss about without PV bus so that you will understand the basics and how to make the calculations easily. So that next class you will be able to understand by including all type of buses how the analysis will be there. So we have already seen in our previous lectures the current can be calculated as the product of the admittance multiplied by the voltage matrix. Let us take for example if I am taking the three bus system the current will be like I1, I2, I3 will be equal to Y11, Y12, Y13 like that it will be 3 by 3 matrix and it will be multiplied with the voltages at the respective nodes to get the current at a particular node. Or we can tell let us assume I want to calculate the current at node number 2 in this case I2 will be equal to Y11, V1 sorry Y21 into V1 plus Y22 into V2 plus Y23 into V3 or in a generalized way for an N bus system, the current injected into the ith node because this i whatever number is there that indicates what is the current inducted into that particular node. So the current inducted into ith node i i will be equal to sigma k is equal to 1 to n y i k into v k. You can see it is matching with this one. So I can write in this form where i is equal to 1 to etc up to n where n is the number of buses or this I can further write y i i into v i plus sigma k is equal to 1 to n k is not equal to i y i k into v k. So this way I can write or from this I can calculate my value of the v i. So this v i will be equal to because this equation come to the second side and total one we divide with y i i. That means v i will be equal to i i divided by y i i minus 1 by y i i times of sigma k is equal to 1 to n k is not equal to i y i k into v k. In this way I can write it. So, we can write the voltage in terms of the current. But in practice, because the current value will not be known, but most of the buses in our power system will be PQ buses or the load buses. That means we know the value of P and Q in advance. That's why I want to replace this current in terms of the power that is P and Q so that the calculation of voltage at any node will be easy. So that's why the complex power injected at the ith bus is given by S is equal to Pi plus JQI which will be equal to V into I conjugate. But we have already seen in our previous class generally it is convenient to analyze by taking the current instead of taking the conjugate of the current. So that's why what we do in practice. In practice we take S I conjugate that means conjugate of the power. So this conjugate of the power becomes the sign of the imaginary term will reverse. So that's why this will become Pi minus JQI will be equal to actually VI into II conjugate whole conjugate becomes VI conjugate into II. So in practice we will take VI conjugate into II which is equal to Pi minus JQI or from this I can calculate my value of II is equal to Pi minus JQI divided by VI conjugate agree with me. So the reason why I am taking this Pi and QI terms because as P A and Q A are normally specified in the power systems because most of the buses are load buses. We already know the value of P A and Q A. So from this I can substitute this in the equation of this V I equation number 3. So I can write V I is equal to the instead of I I I am replacing P A minus J Q I by V I conjugate. So I have substituted P A minus J Q I by V I conjugate. 1 by Y I I have taken is out because it is common. So minus sigma k is equal to 1 to n k is not equal to i y i k into v k. So this form I can get it. So you can see here the equation for v i is depending again on the equation for the v i. That means the v i is unknown. That's why we go for the iterative method for all the buses to calculate the value of voltage. So that we are going to discuss in detail. So for that I am taking one example. I am taking the case of a fiber system. So these are the five buses which are connected like this. So out of these buses, I am assuming that all my buses are the load buses. And we know that in any type of power system for analyzing, we take at least one bus as a slack bus because we don't know the losses beforehand. So that will calculate, that means we will calculate the total value of the power, active and reactive power required to supply this load. So that's why we take one bus as a slack bus. So for this slack bus, the voltage will be specified as well as the delta will be taken as a 0 degrees we have already seen in the last to last class and the remaining buses are taken as the load buses. So here I am assuming that there is no PV bus only slack bus is there and the load buses are there to make the analysis easy. So we can calculate the value of the voltages 
how to calculate the value of the voltage because we can calculate the value of voltage 2 voltage at node number 2 will be equal to 1 by y22 into p2 minus jq2 as per the above formula that is v2 conjugate minus so which buses are connected to this one for this bus y12 is connected and y23 is connected so that's why this equation becomes minus y21 into v1 plus y23 into v3 because remaining are not connected they will become equal to zero and v1 is taken as fixed because it is a slack bus we did not do the iteration for this one so similar way i can calculate for the bus number 3 v3 will be equal to 1 by y33 into p3 minus jq3 by v3 conjugate minus so which are connected to node number 3 so node number 3 y23 is connected y34 are connected so y32 or y23 is connected and y34 is nothing but equal to y43 that is spelled connected so we have calculated similarly i can calculate the value of v4 so for the fourth bus what are connected here y45 is connected y14 connected y34 connected so three are connected that's why three are coming here remaining things will remain same similar is the case for the fifth bus 1 by y55 into here only two are connected y45 and y15 so only those things are coming here getting it so here total for n bus system total n voltages are required out of the n voltages one voltage is already fixed value so that's why we need not go for the iteration of this one only we have to solve n minus one number of nonlinear equations because in this case fiber system four nonlinear equations came if it is a n bus system in general n minus one nonlinear equations are solved using the iterative methods discussed in last class that is gas method and gas idle method so with these basics i am proceeding further first i am starting with the gas method so for the gas method what we will do first we will start it so then read the system data and form the nodal admittance matrix because first step is to form the node admittance matrix so first we will form the node admittance matrix once the admittance matrix is formed then we assume the initial bus voltage of all the pq buses are the constant value that means randomly we will assign some initial guess we have seen for the gas and gas idle method initially we have to guess some value so we take the initial guess value as 1 plus j0 in practice so all the pq buses we take vi is equal to 1 plus j0 for i is equal to 1 to n except the slack bus for the case of slack bus the voltage is already mentioned the voltage will be equal to a plus j0 that means it is nothing but a at an angle of 0 degrees and for the case of load buses i will take as 1 at an angle of 0 degrees that's why it is 1 plus j0 getting it once this initialization is done then after that we will count the iteration count c is equal to 0 initially we are starting with the iteration count c is equal to 0 and after that we have to decide when we have to stop this so we have to decide the convergence criteria that convergence criteria will be difference of the voltage in current iteration minus previous iteration we have already seen before that will be delta v maximum it will be equal to epsilon so if the value is less than this value less than or equal to this value we will stop our iterations so once this is done after that we will set the bus count to one that means we will start from bus number one we will go up to the number of buses so that's why we have set the bus count to one so first we will test for each bus we will check whether that particular bus is a slack bus or not because slack bus may or may not be bus number one only it can be any number bus so that's why we will test whether it is a slack bus or not so if it is a slack bus we need not make any calculation for the voltage because voltage in every iteration is same so if it is a slack bus we will directly go to this step so what we will do advance the bus count by one that means i becomes i plus one so once the count is increased then we will check whether all the buses are checked so if all the buses are not checked again we will go for test for the next bus whether it is a slack bus or not because i is increased by one let us take for example i am starting from bus number one we will check bus number one is a slack bus let us assume bus one is a slack bus then we will go here so we, i will increment to two that means bus number becomes two then we will check whether all the buses are covered all the buses are not covered so now what we will do we will go back there so now we will check for bus number two let us assume bus number two is not a slack bus it is a load bus so what we will do then we will go inside so once we go inside what we have to do we have to solve for the value of the voltage in the current iteration that means vi of c plus 1 for that particular bus so that vi of c plus 1 will be equal to vi of c plus 1 is equal to 1 by yii because we have calculated the voltage equation before same thing i am keeping here of pi minus jqi divided by vi of c that means vi of 
what is the value of the voltage in the previous iteration so that is vi of c we have to take the conjugate minus we have to take the sum of k is equal to 1 to n k is not equal to i because we have seen the same equation how it came so y i k into v k that means voltage of the kth bus in the previous iteration so we get the updated value of the voltage in the current iteration so once the updated value of the voltage comes in the current iteration so automatically then immediately we will calculate delta v i of c we will calculate delta v i of c so what is delta v i of c delta v i of c will be equal to v i of c plus 1 minus v i of c so let us take it as c plus 1 so that will be easy so delta v i of c plus 1 will be equal to v i of c plus 1 minus v i of c so this value we will check it when we are going to the end so now once this value of delta v i is calculated we will advance the bus count by 1 plus 1 and by 1 and again check for all buses so that means for each and every bus we will calculate the updated value of v i we will calculate for updated value of v i so out of this calculating the updated value of v i because if you see in this equation p is known and it is constant q is known and constant it will not change with iteration y i i will not change with iteration and y i k will not change with iteration only the values which depends on the iteration is this v i and v k so that's why i can just simplify this further i can write v i of c plus 1 as p i minus j q i divided by y i i into 1 by v i of in the c iteration conjugate minus sigma k is equal to 1 to n k is not equal to i so let us remove this to avoid confusion k is not equal to i y i k by y i i into v k to v k in the c iteration so this value is constant this value is constant i am representing this value as a i and representing y i k by y i i as b i k so i can write v i c plus 1 is equal to a i by v i c conjugate minus sigma k is equal to 1 to n except k is equal to i b i k into v k in the c iteration so as we can calculate the value of a and b i k before going to the iteration method which are same in every iteration the calculation of v i c plus 1 becomes so much easy that is the advantage of this one so in every numerical we will calculate like this so once all the buses are checked so once all the buses are checked so one iteration is over then we will determine the largest absolute value of change in the voltage so because every bus we are calculating delta vi so out of this delta vi in our example five buses are there so every bus we are calculating delta vi in that we will calculate what is the maximum absolute value of this delta vi so if that maximum value is less than the requirement or the tolerance limit that means the criteria is satisfied we have to stop if that value of delta v maximum is not less than or equal to this epsilon that means we have not reached the convergence limit so that's why what we have to do we have to again go for one more iteration so we are representing iteration by c so iteration count is increased by one that means c becomes c plus one and we will go for next iteration next iteration means again we will go for bus count number one and we will do for all the buses once again so like that we will go on proceeding until the convergence is reached let us assume the convergence is reached once the convergence is reached we know the value of the bus voltages of all the buses so for the case of slack bus we need we have to calculate the value of p and q once the voltages of all the nodes are known then using the load flow analysis i can calculate the value of the slack bus power because we can calculate the current inducted by the slack bus once the current inducted by the slack bus is known so after that i can calculate the value of pi and qi because you can see this one we can calculate the value of current injected by the slack bus once the current injected by the slack bus is known then after that we can calculate the value of power supplied by the slack bus easily that means this si conjugate is equal to pi minus jqi is equal to we know the node voltage at that particular node of the slack bus which is fixed that means voltage of the slack bus conjugate multiplied by current injected by the slack bus we can calculate the power supplied by the slack bus easily so this is the procedure for the gas method so the next method is the gas sidel method the difference between the gas method and the gas sidel method is in the case of gas method in the current iteration we are always taking the value of the node voltages as the previous iteration values but whereas in the gas sidel method immediately they are updated so in this method the new calculated value vi of c plus 1 immediately replaces vi of k and is used in the solution of subsequent equations 
so whatever the statement i told it may be confusing to you so that's why i am taking the example back again so for this bus we have to calculate the value of the voltages first we are starting from bus 1 up to bus 5 so we need not calculate for bus 1 because bus 1 is a slack bus so now starting from bus number 2 so bus number 2 i am calculating the value of v2 of c plus 1 will be equal to 1 by y22 into p2 minus jq2 divided by v2 of previous iteration because v2 we don't know the exact value so v2 of previous iteration conjugate minus so which buses are connected to this y12 is connected so y12 we have to multiply with v1 because v1 is not changing with iterations that's why i have taken it as v1 only so now the second bus that is connected is v23 because v23 is also connected to the second bus so v23 so y23 multiplied by v3 because v3 is not at calculated that's why we will take the value of v3 of previous iteration v3 of c so now v3 of c of previous iteration taken so v2 is updated now so next when we are calculating the next bus voltage if you are getting the value of v2 required we will take v2 c plus 1 instead of v2 c so that is what is done here so let us proceed for example v3 c plus 1 will be equal to 1 by y3 3 p3 minus jq3 by v3 of previous iteration conjugate up to here it is okay so now which buses are connected to bus number 3 y23 is connected y34 is connected so for calculating y34 we need the voltage of v4 because v4 is not updated so we take the v4 of previous iteration only whereas v2 because y23 is associated with v2 v2 is already updated v2 c plus 1 is available to us so we will take v2 c plus 1 instead of v2 c in the case of gas method we will take v2 c but here we are taking v2 c plus 1 updated value of v2 so now again now v3 updated value is known to us so for calculating the voltage of the fourth bus that means v4 of c plus 1 so again fourth bus which are connected bus number 3 is connected 1 is connected and 5 is connected so out of this the 5 is not updated so that's why we will take the 5 for the previous iteration value but whereas bus number 3 and bus number 1 we will take the updated value so in this example bus number 1 is a slack bus that's why it is not changing but bus number 3 we will take the updated value that means v3 of c plus 1 whereas in the case of gas method we will take it as v3 of c that is the difference so similar is the case you can go for bus number 5 for bus number 5 what are connected bus number 1 is connected bus number 4 is connected here also you can see we are taking the updated value of bus number 4 here that means whichever are updated we will take it whichever not updated we will take the previous values only or we can write the generalized equation for this load flow equation for the voltage or the nodal voltage as we know vi is equal to from equation number 5 1 by yi into pi minus jqi by vi conjugate minus sigma k is equal to 1 to n k is not equal to i yik into vk this k is from 0 to sorry 1 to n so how to calculate the voltage of ith bus in the next iteration vi of c plus 1 will be because when we are calculating for the ith bus already up to v1 to vi minus 1 buses are already updated so you have to take the updated values up to i minus 1th bus and from i, I plus 1th bus to n because i bus will not be there here so from i plus 1 to n we will take the previous iteration values only whereas from k is equal to 1 to i minus 1 these buses we have already calculated the updated value that's why we will take the updated value of the voltages we will take vk of c plus 1 in calculation so this is my generalized equation which i can write getting it so now once this voltage is obtained vi of c plus 1 we know that delta vi of c plus 1 is nothing but vi of c plus 1 minus vi of c that means the difference of voltage in current iteration that means updated value minus previous value so that gives the difference in the value between two iterations right so or otherwise from this equation we can tell vi of c plus 1 is equal to it is nothing but equal to value in the previous iteration plus the difference between previous it, current iteration and the previous iteration value you agree with me i can write like this so in practice to speed up the convergence rate thereby decreasing the number of iterations because that will decrease the time for execution so one acceleration factor is used that acceleration factor alpha is generally taken as 1.6 for the case of power systems generally this value of alpha is taken as 1.6 in practice for power systems so depending on how much acceleration factor you are taking that also it may increase 
the divergence or sometimes it may become a divergent instead of converging it may diverge also but practically they have observed for power system analysis if you are taking 1.6 the convergence rate is increased only so that's why 1.6 is taken in practice so we can tell that vi of c plus 1 will be equal to vi of c plus alpha times of delta vi of c plus 1 that means in practice vi of c plus 1 will not be taken as what is obtained in this iteration it will be like this or this i can write as this is nothing but vi of c plus alpha times of vi of c plus 1 minus vi of c so vi obtained in current vi of c plus 1 that means obtained in the current iteration minus previous iteration we will multiply with alpha that we will add to previous iteration value that will be my updated value of vi of c plus 1 that will be used for the next bus voltage calculation so in that way the convergence rate will be fast in practice so we are going to solve the numerical in next to next lecture so there i will explain all these concept in detail so then i am summarizing the gauss seidel method so gauss seidel method is similar to the gauss method only only difference is in this method the new calculated value vi of c plus 1 immediately replaces vi of k and is used in the solution of subsequent equations remaining steps all the steps are same only difference is calculation of vi of c plus 1 will be 1 by yii into pi minus jqi by vi of cth iteration conjugate minus from k is equal to 1 to i minus 1 plus we will use the updated value of the voltage and for k is equal to i plus 1th plus to nth plus we will use the previous iteration value getting it or whichever constant values are there i can pre-calculate them and substitute so if you substitute them you will get it as ai by vi of c conjugate minus sigma k is equal to 1 to i minus 1 b i k into v k of c plus 1 and sigma k is equal to i plus 1 to 1 b i k into v k of the previous iteration so in this way i can calculate getting it so this is the only difference between the gas method and the gas sidle method i hope what is the gas method what is the gas sidle method for a transmission line which doesn't have the pv bus is completely clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much